It's the BFF that vitamin D needs to do its job. You see, vitamin D is this codependent little wimpy vitamin that's not really a vitamin at all, it's technically a hormone, and it needs K2 to properly do its job. So I wanna give you this video that explains why they should be coupled together and how exactly it works. Now I've done videos talking about vitamin D before, but I wanna give you a really quick recap on what it is. You see, vitamin D isn't really a vitamin at all. It's technically a hormone. We absorb vitamin D generally from the sun and it goes through a methylization process by the liver that kind of converts it into more of a hormone. Now, 80% of the population is deficient in vitamin D. A lot of it has to do with the fact that we're not outside as much, our body's becoming more adapted to just being indoors all the time. Now, the other thing, vitamin D helps us absorb calcium and I'll get into that in just a minute. But also, vitamin D does something very interesting when it comes to belly fat. In fact, according to the Journal of Clinical Nutrition, in a study where they took test subjects that were on a 12-week resistance training program, they gave half the test subjects 4,000 IUs of vitamin D, and the other half they gave a placebo. Well, at the end of 12 weeks, it was found that both sets of test subjects lost the same amount of weight, but those that had the vitamin D supplementation had a significantly lower waist-to-hip ratio which tells us that vitamin D has a direct correlation with losing a little bit more of that stubborn belly fat. Now, the only foods that you can really get vitamin D from are fish and eggs. Now, you can get little amounts out of mushrooms if you do certain little tricks like leaving them on a windowsill and stuff, but ultimately it comes down to getting it from the sun at a lot of times supplementation. The big thing that's super important about vitamin D is what it does in the way of calcium absorption. You see, vitamin D kind of communicates with the parathyroid gland. The parathyroid gland secretes something called PTH when we are deficient in vitamin D. And what that PTH does is it goes around to the bones and it goes around to the soft tissue and it starts extracting the calcium out of the bones and out of the soft tissue. This can weaken our bones and it can also just cause a world of hurt in terms of mineral balance within our bodies. The kidneys at that point become much more bioavailable to vitamin D and it sort of throws off the ecosystem of the body. So when you have sufficient levels of vitamin D, your body is able to absorb calcium from the diet better and put it where it's supposed to go. And that brings me to talking about vitamin K2. K2 is sort of an ugly stepchild that we don't hear about too much. Now what K2 is responsible for is it's responsible for healthy blood clotting, which we don't think of a lot either. It helps our blood coagulate, helps stop bleeding if we need it. Now the other thing that K2 does is it also assists in calcium absorption. But here's where it gets kind of fun. You see, it works directly with D3. D3 is great at helping your body absorb calcium, but that's about it. It says, okay, we can use this calcium, but it has no idea where to put it. So now you've basically got this rogue calcium going through your bloodstream, which means it can be deposited in the arteries, it can be deposited in the soft tissue where it may not really be needed. Now I want you to visualize K2 as sort of the traffic cop when it comes to this. K2 sees this calcium come in and it directs it to the right place. It directs it to the bones where we most likely need it. See, we don't want too much calcium going into the soft tissue. If it goes into the arteries, it can cause lots of cardiovascular issues. We don't want that placking of the arteries. We don't want that calcification there. So K2 is really what's gonna direct that calcium in the appropriate place. So at the end of the day, you've got this triple threat. You need calcium, you need D3, and you need K2. So the best way that you're going to get this from eating the right kind of meat sources, organic meat sources, sometimes the right kind of goat cheeses, and the right kind of hard cheeses that allow you to get the right kind of calcium and K2 that you need, but you also want to make sure that you're eating them in the right amounts. And if you're not getting those kinds of foods, or if you're vegan or vegetarian, you can always supplement them. Just remember, they work together, they're BFFs, and that's the way it is. I'll see you in the next video.